So last week, Russia performed an anti-satellite test by blowing up a satellite which produced 1,500 pieces of trackable debris. And the debris was in the path of the ISS, so the astronauts had to hide in their return vehicles while the debris passed. At first, Russia was tweeting that everything was all good, but the U.S. Department of State has since confirmed that this was Russia's doing, and in my words, incredibly stupid. Now, I'm sure you're aware, but even just half an ounce of plastic traveling at a speed slower than the ISS can produce this massive, massive dent. And there's a lot of questions and discussion about space debris becoming a problem, but I prefer to talk about solutions. So I want to talk about one of my favorite solutions to space debris. Because every time I think about space debris, I think of this article that I saw about using confectionery sugar to reduce the deorbit time. So what does that mean? Let's get into it. Now is the time to take risk. So first off, I first came across this from Casey Hanmere's blog. This is genuinely one of my favorite blogs out there. It, 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 it might actually be the favorite. I read every post that he writes. And in this one, he was talking about a Navy patent that he found, which I'll get into. And I think about it every time that I see space debris in the news. So if you want to read it, just go check it out. But this Russian satellite test that blew up and created debris, it wasn't the first of its kind. I mean, the US and other nations have done these before which I don't condone, and there have also been large satellite collisions and breakups before, such as the Iridium Cosmos breakup and the Fangun, Fangyun, Fangun 1C breakup. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. And these two breakups are some of the biggest causes of space debris at certain altitudes, as you can see on this chart. And mostly, this debris orbits at altitudes above the ISS, so the astronauts aren't constantly concerned about this. But that's what makes this Russian test interesting, they blew it up in the same altitude as the ISS, or around the same altitude, and it's, it's like dangerous. Like, why are they sabotaging the ISS? Now, the reason that there isn't usually satellite debris at these altitudes is because of atmospheric drag. At lower altitudes, there's more atmosphere, and the ISS has to push through some atmosphere. They're constantly pushing their thrusters upward so that they stay at the same altitude, and this creates drags on the debris particles and deorbits them more quickly. So, the lower the debris is, the faster it deorbits. And you can think about this for every 100 kilometers of altitude, it takes about 10x more or less time depending on if you go up or down. So for example, a piece of debris would spend a thousand years falling from 700 kilometers to 600 kilometers, but it would, but it would only spend a hundred years going from 600 kilometers to 500 kilometers in altitude, and so on. So the ISS is around 250 miles or 400 kilometers, so I'm guessing this will mostly deorbit within two years. If it's currently at 400 kilometers, it will take one year to go from 400 to 300, then five weeks to go from 300 to 200, and then just a few more weeks to burn up in the atmosphere. This is, this is just my guess. So since the debris at lower altitudes deorbits faster, the main concern is at the upper altitudes. So what do we do to solve this? Most of the work currently to deorbit these satellites before they cause debris are obviously before they cause debris, so basically they have other satellites going to catch these dead satellites, assuming that the dead satellites didn't have a deorbit plan. So they go catch them, they grab onto them, and then they bring them back down into the atmosphere and then burn up together. That's the main method and that's what a lot of startups are focused on. But this doesn't really work when obviously a dead satellite that you can't control collides with another satellite and produces debris. So like, what are we going to do in that situation? Because it's kind of inevitable that it will happen. But that said, I'm not super concerned about it. And this is where Casey's blog post comes in. Clouds for deorbiting other clouds. Okay, so enter this Navy patent from 2011. Basically, in 2011, the Navy patented this super cool concept of using tungsten powder. So they would load up the fairing of a rocket with 20 tons of finely grained tungsten powder. And for reference, this would easily fit inside a Falcon 9 and they would launch it in the opposite direction of the debris cloud. So just visually, if the debris cloud was going this direction, they would launch the rocket and then have an orbital cloud to intersect with this debris. This, uh, I know that's not the best visual, but it's just going in the opposite direction of the, of the orbiting debris. So the rocket goes up, it releases the cloud of tungsten powder, it creates a cloud that orbits in the opposite direction of the debris. And then what happens is the tungsten powder would hit the debris and essentially create like an atmosphere because the tungsten powder, it's so fine that it essentially acts as an atmosphere and not as like bullets hitting the satellite pieces. So it essentially acts as an atmosphere and creates drag in that area for all the satellite debris to slow down and, and decrease their deorbit time. And 
because the tungsten is so finely tuned, so finely ground, you can actually adjust the size of the tungsten purposefully to make it small enough so that it doesn't impact satellites in that same orbital cloud. So large satellites won't be affected, but the tungsten, the very small grains of tungsten will hit the satellite debris, slow it down and bring it out of orbit. And then the active satellites that are still there, it might affect them a little bit, but they can just thrust and, and deal with it. And by creating this targeted atmosphere, you can reduce the deorbit time by over a thousand X. Meaning that instead of taking a thousand years at 700 kilometers to deorbit, it could only take one year. So that's, that's nuts. Like that's crazy. That makes me optimistic that if there are indicators that we're entering Kessler syndrome, we can fix it. So I'm not, so like I am concerned about satellite debris, but I think there are solutions here. And so the really cool part and why I think of this every single time that I see space debris is that, you know, tungsten actually might not be the best material. It's not easy to launch when you're launching. Like uh, there's just all this stuff. It's tough to deploy because it sticks together due to solar wind static adhesion. And so what's an easier solution and perhaps even a cheaper solution is confectionery sugar. This is what Casey Hanmere proposes in his blog post. I love this. And uh, yeah, so send up confectionery sugar, create clouds going in the opposite direction of these debris, and then reduce the deorbit time from a thousand years to one year. That's incredible. And it makes me very optimistic that we can actually solve orbital debris. But for now, Russia, <laughs> what the fuck? Now is the time to take risk. Okay, and one more thing, not related to the satellite debris, but Tim Ferriss just had a podcast with Balaji, who's like a, a crypto guy, a hard tech guy. He's really cool. And he discussed my bioelectricity content. He gave me a shout out. This is my first shout out on the Tim Ferriss podcast. So I'm just sharing this with you guys. I think this is really cool. And the link is in the description. Anyways, sauce a like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about space debris now. And if you're going to think about confectionery sugar every time, Drop your best joke about this, and otherwise I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.